As I've kind of teased up till now, today we're going to be learning all about using Google Analytics 4 as your e-commerce analytics tool, both for tracking, reporting, all of that stuff. Julia is going to take us through some comparison of Universal Analytics versus Google Analytics for data, how those metrics stack up against each other and what you really need to know before you start looking at the comparison between the two platforms. Thanks, Kate. Before Mike gets into showing us just how we can use all this GA4 data, we need to take a step back and go back to the basics and talk about what some of these basic metrics are in GA4. So. The metrics here that we're going to talk about are users, session, engagement rate, bounce rate, conversions, and transactions slash purchases. You might think these metrics are the same as UA, but they're not entirely. There's some different data definitions, different collection metrics, and some of these metrics are entirely new. First metric here we're going to talk about is users. In Universal Analytics, users is just the total number of users. However, in GA4, there's a couple more metrics. Total users, which is the total number of unique users who have logged an event. New users, which is the number of users who interacted with your site for the first time. And active users, which is the number of users who have an engaged session. There's going to be a couple differences between your GA4 users and your, uh, your UA users. GA4 uses Google signals, so it's superior in figuring out that a user might connect across devices. It might see a user who logs in from their phone and then their computer. GA4 is actually able to connect those sessions into one user using Google Signals. So your total number of users in GA4 might be a little lower. The next important metric to talk about is sessions. GA4 sessions are pretty similar to UA in that they're a period of time in which a user is on the site and ends with about 30 minutes of inactivity unless the setting has changed. Similarly, if a user comes back after the session timeout, it will start a new session in both UA and in GA4. However, in GA4, sessions are not restarted at midnight or when new campaign parameters are encountered. Therefore, we expect the uh, GA4 to actually have fewer sessions. We do generally expect to see this number within 10%, but that's not always the case. There might be uh, filters or maybe a tag coverage issue that's worth looking into further if the difference is significant. The next really important metric to understand is engagement rate. Engagement rate is an entirely new metric to GA4 and was initially the answer to the universal analytics bounce rate. Engagement rate is the percentage of sessions that were engaged sessions. Now, natural question here is what is an engaged session? An engaged session is just a session that lasts longer than 10 seconds, has a conversion event, or has at least two page views or screen views. Now, your next question here is, hey, I thought GA4 had bounce rate. What's that about? And that's true. However, this is arguably the biggest metric where you're going to see the largest difference between Universal Analytics and GA4. In Universal Analytics, bounce rate is simply a percentage of single page sessions in which there was no interaction with the page. However, in GA4, that changed. And GA4 bounce rate is percentage of sessions that were not engaged sessions. In other words, it is the inverse of the engagement rate. It's also not included by most standard reports by default. However, it can be uh, edited into many of these reports. In general, we recommend looking at the engagement rate before the bounce rate in GA4. The next really important metric that we need to talk about is conversions and how they compare to UA goals. A conversion is just any user-defined action that is valuable to your business. Some really common examples of this are going to be uh, items that make you money, like purchasing from your score subscribing to your newsletter, filling out your contact form. This is a really similar idea to the Universal Analytics goals. However, they're not going to line up one-to-one. -one. Just because something was a goal in Universal Analytics does not necessarily mean you're going to be tracking it as a conversion in GA4. You might only be tracking it as an event and not as a conversion. Additionally, even if you are tracking the same event as both a conversion in GA4 and a goal in Universal Analytics, they won't necessarily line up one-to-one. -one. GA4 removed the restriction on a goal firing more than once per session. So if someone fills out your contact form twice in one session, Universal Analytics will likely only count that once, while GA4 is going to count this twice. Therefore, there can be some pretty significant differences in your total number of conversions and your total number of goals in Universal Analytics. Finally, we get to transactions and purchases. Now, GA4 and Universal Analytics have very different ways of collecting this data which can account for some differences. However, assuming that they're both set up well, we do expect them to be relatively similar. Uh, in the example down below, that is the same client 
say, same time frame, 468 purchases versus 465. Very similar. Difference in revenue is likely just from those purchases. However, where this can get confusing is GA4 will likely never perfectly match your e-commerce platform. And your platform will almost certainly have a higher number of transactions and revenue in GA4 for a variety of reasons. Some of these common reasons can include browser extensions that block GTM or GA4, users choosing not to opt into tracking, strict privacy settings in your browser, users leaving the site before GA4 can register their purchase, but after the e-commerce platform register their purchase, JavaScript being disabled in browsers. Unfortunately, there is no one number I can tell you here as like an acceptable margin of error. And that's because why this, this can really vary wildly depending on your industry, your audience, your location. Uh, we do have some experience with working to get your GA4 closer to, to your e-commerce platform. Uh, so if that's something you'd like to talk about in more depth, I really encourage you to reach out to us. So in summary, comparing UA and GA4 data is really comparing apples and oranges. You can't compare these one to one. Really here, we recommend focusing on the trends and not on the exact numbers. When you're looking at year over year data, comparing UA and GA4 metrics, they just don't line up perfectly. Differences are going to be there.